this topic for discussion is diagnosis and treatment planning in fixed partial lectures. For the success of any treatment, diagnosis is very important. In case of fixed partial denture, the diagnosis and the treatment planning stages has four components, four important components which are to be satisfied in order to arrive at a correct treatment planning. These include history, intraoral examination, diagnostic cast and fulmot radiographs. What does the history include? History first includes the main chief complaint and this can fall under four categories. The patient might come to you with four different types of problems related to first the comfort he might have problem with the comfort like he might be suffering from pain swelling or sensitivity the second one being function he might be having some problem in functioning like difficulty in speech or in mastication the third one being social problems which are related to bad odor and taste the fourth one being the appearance like he might not be satisfied with the smile he has. Like they might be fractured or unattracted teeth or attrited or abraded teeth. Coming with the first history part. History includes dental history. What all components fall under dental history? The first being periodontal history. The periodontium is a very important tissue for the success of your fixed partial denture. Hence, you have to carry out a thorough examination of your periodontium. What all do you have to check in the periodontal history? Ask the patient about his current oral hygiene conditions through which you can actually come to a conclusion about his complaints. Also, ask him about uh, the recent periodontal procedures he has undergone, the duration and the timings, and any history related to his previous periodontal other procedures. Coming to the restorative history. In restorative history, you have to check, carry on thorough examination related to previous restorative procedures the patient has undergone like any fillings or any other corrective procedures. Also, this includes crowns and any permanent restorations. Also, consider the age of the restorations. Uh, when did he get the restoration done and what material? Why did he get it done? So, you have to get all the thorough history. Coming to the endodontic history. On uh, thorough examination, you can actually find few teeth which are endodontically treated. So you have to go with a radiographic examination of this teeth. You have to take the duration when this person has got this done. So with that, you have to actually uh, conduct frequent follow-up checkups in order to assess the periapical condition. Uh, in a long-standing root canal treated case, there might be some periodontal or periapical problems still be uh, occurring due to delayed healing. Coming to the orthodontic history, this includes occlusal analysis. It is inevitable that following orthodontic treatment, there might be some balances in the imbalances in the occlusion forces compared to the right and the left sides. In such cases, it is must and should that you have to carry on with the proper occlusal analysis. Coming to oral surgical history, this includes the history of any missing teeth. Why are they missing? What can be the reason that they are missing and also any other surgeries, minor oral surgeries which the patient has undergone which will actually help you assess his previous oral hygiene conditions. If it is due to a mobile teeth being extracted, then this can be related to his previous poor periodontal history. Coming to radiographic history, this includes any radiographs he might carry like the previous uh, radiographs of the previous treatments which he has undergone. So this will give you the uh, exact idea of what was done earlier and also when you compare these previous radiographs with the current radiographs you can actually assess the condition how it is being maintained since the time that it has been treated coming to TMJ dysfunction theory so in this TMJ dysfunction history it is very important that you uh, collect history related to any uh, complaints of pain or clicking or any neuromuscular symptoms like on uh, any deviations during wide opening or any dislocations or dislodgements. Coming to the next component of uh, treatment planning, it is extraoral examination. In extraoral examination, the first and foremost thing is your TMJ. So in TMJ examination, you have to compare the TMJ movements, comparison between the right and left side movements. It should be done on inspection, palpation and also auscultation. You have to compare if there are any asynchronous movements, tenderness or pain on movement, if there is any 
deviation while opening, the amount of maximal opening and other history related to the TMJ. In palpation, you have to also assess the muscles which are supporting your TMJ and the mandible. Coming to lips, this is the second component in the extra oral examination. Lips, lip examination is very important. You have to examine the lips during rest and in smiling position. This will help you assess the visibility of the restoration. It will also help you in the selection of the material for your restoration and also the placement of the margin. Coming to intraoral examination. This will first start with your periodontal examination which includes the examination of the gingiva. First, normal gingiva appears pinkish in color. Pinkish to coral red in color depending on the ethnicity. But whereas in deceased gingiva, the, uh, it appears slightly red or fiery red in color. So after the examination of the gingiva, going with the sulcus depth, the normal sulcus depth ranges between 0 to 3 mm. Whereas in deceased condition, they might be increasing the sulcus depth, which means there are pockets. So if the depth is more than 3 mm, then you should record it as a pocket. Coming to furcation involvements, if there are any furcation involvements that are seen, you have to first assess why it is being happened. Is it because of overloading of the tooth or is it because of any periodontal disease that there is bone loss and furcation involvement. Coming to the next uh, which is recession. Recession happens hand in hand with a furcation involvement. As the gum is residing on fine day there will be furcation involvement. So you have to record recession in relation to lingual and buccal surfaces and in relation to each tooth. And then mobility. You have to also check each and every tooth for mobility because in case of your abutment selection, you have to select a good strong tooth. Whereas a mobile tooth might not actually serve the purpose of an abutment. So in such cases, if there is any mobility, you have to record the grades of mobility of each and every tooth. Be it a tooth which is being uh, taken as abutment or the one which is not being taken. You have to take proper history of all the teeth. Coming to plock. Also take some plaque and hygiene indexes. This will actually help you arrive at a conclusion of what is the patient's complaints about his oral hygiene maintenance. Also you can come to a conclusion of formulating a proper hygiene maintenance protocol for the patient. Coming to teeth and restorations. In your intraoral examination, you routinely have to also check for the other teeth and the restorations if there are any. If there are any restorations, you have to record the type of material, the type of restoration, when was the restoration done and why is it done. Coming to occlusal examination, intraoral examination of occlusion, you have to collect information related to the first tooth contact, if there is any deviation with that tooth contact and also the patient's present occlusion scheme, what he is having. Is it a mutual function or a group function or canine guided? You have to record the occlusion. And you have to restore the same occlusion to the patient even after you give the FPD. So just in case he is having any deranged occlusion. So you have to go with a long term intermediate restorations where you will have a chance to correct your uh, the occlusion scheme of the patient and give him an ideal one. So in such cases, you have to uh, assess conditions like what are the potential effects if you delay the treatment for some time and what is the potential effect the new scheme will have on his TMJ when you give or when you are planning to change his occlusion scheme. Coming to radiographic examination. Radiographic examination is the most important adjunct to your main diagnosis. So in this case you have to uh, routinely carry out full mouth radiographic x-rays so that you don't miss out any unfound finding which is clinically not seen. In radiographic examination, you have to look for things like any root canal therapy. Uh, if there is any evidence of periodontal disease clinically, you have to relate it with your x-ray. Just carry out uh, the routine intraoral examination and with a doubt, wherever you have any chances, you think if there is any bone loss, you have to carry out local x-rays and you have to check for any bone loss. Is it angular or horizontal? And then if there are any large or deep restorations or deep carious uh, uh, areas, you have to check for the depth. How, how close is it to the pulp and how is the life of the restoration? If there is any requirement for any uh, deep carious management or any pulpal therapy, you have to plan it at this stage and then go ahead before you actually plan for your final restorative procedures. And then evaluation of bone density. 
evaluation of your abutment teeth. This is the most important thing for which you take x-rays or uh, the radiographs in your FPD planning. So you can actually assess your abutment condition, the roots, the configuration of the roots, the number of roots, the length and the type of the bone around the abutment. Then assessment of TMJ disorders. If you go with orthopantomogram, you can actually see your temporomandibular joint which will actually help you diagnose if there is any problem related to your TMJ. Diagnostic cast. This is one more most important procedure which you have to carry out before you arrive at a final conclusion or a final diagnosis. So after you carry out the extraoral, intraoral examinations and the radiographic examination, you have to make diagnostic impressions of the patient and with the help of a Facebook transfer, you have to relate his art cast to the articulator. This will help you study the occlusion to 100%. It is because intraorally you might be having hindrances from the muscles and neuromuscular control. The patient might not give uh, his proper bite or he might not actually show his proper occlusion when you are trying to examine. It might be because of the neuromuscular control and also due to some amount of anxiety the patient faces. In such cases, when you do this Facebook transfer and mount it on the articulator, you will have a very good chance to study the occlusion in centric in maximum intercuspation. Also, you can study the first contact. If there is any deviation, you can correct the deviations. And also, uh, if you compare uh, the abutment areas and also the edentulous area, you can actually see the occlusal gingival height of the abutment, the length of the span, the configuration of the arch, the type of movements your proposed filling is going to take up. And also, with the diagnostic cast, you can actually carry on a mock preparation and if there is any chance or with this you can actually know the amount of reduction possible and if required if there is any intentional treatments like any intentional root canal therapy required. So diagnostic has help you arrive at a proper diagnosis. Coming to the prognosis. Before you actually formulate your treatment plan and after you arrive at a proper diagnosis you have to set up the level of prognosis. Prognosis is the likely amount of success of the treatment, the likeliness of the progress or the progression of the disease. So this prognosis is affected by general factors and local factors. The general factors being his age and his mental status, his psychological status. Whereas the local factors include other local conditions in the mouth like the type of the abutment, the type of restoration he has and if the abutment is root canal treated, uh, since when it is treated or how long has it been treated and the condition of the periopical tissues, the bone, density of the bone and many other local factors. Next, coming to replacement of a single missing tooth. It is a straightforward case. In that case, you just have to see your next abutments and the surrounding bone. Whereas, if you have to replace several missing teeth, this is a complex case where it is must and should that you go ahead with your complete uh, intraoral photographs, uh, radiographs and then mounted articulated cast. So in such cases, you have to actually see the span, the anterior posterior spread of the edentulous face, the curvature of the arch and also the type of uh, the occlusion the patient has. All these factors will actually guide and help you in proper treatment planning and in executing that proper treatment plan which you have done so that uh, your treatment will be successful. Coming to orthodontic adjunctive treatments, sometimes uh, the abutments might not be ideal like in case of a long standing, long standing case where the first molar is missing. So in such cases, there might be problem with the position of your second molar. There might be slight mesial drifting. Also, there might be some supra eruption of the opposing tooth. In such cases, uh, before you actually go with more invasive procedures like the intentional root canal of the uh, improper teeth, you have to try out a uh, minimally invasive technique which might actually take time which is orthodontic management. In such cases you can actually reduce the need for any extensive endodontic or periodontic procedures and it can actually reduce the amount of teeth reduction. So if you do any uprighting and intrusion in such cases you can actually correct the alignment of the teeth which will help you the uh, reduction of the tooth. So amount of reduction will be less and hence you can actually maintain the vitality. Just in case if there is a teeth, you can intrude the teeth improving the crown root ratio. 
Also, you can improve the alveolar contour, improve the direction and distribution of forces, and if there are any um, mal-aligned teeth or misaligned teeth, in such cases, by correcting the alignment, you can actually help the patient maintain his hygiene. In such cases, orthodontics helps you in proper treatment planning as an agent. So now that you have got proper idea about what all you have to check in the diagnosis stage, so after arriving at a, a different, uh, with the initial examination, you might arrive at multiple diagnoses like uh, up to two or three. So depending on uh, the type and the history, you have to actually go ahead with the extra diagnostic procedures which you might need to help you attain at a final diagnosis. And then set up a proper prognosis. If required, you have to actually main firstly you have to correct the symptoms and then stabilize the condition and after the symptomatic and stabilization then you have to go with your definitive treatment